Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, getting started with Smartsheet. So um, just to kick off, we are Echo Consulting. Um, we blend people processing technology that drives transformation. Um, we work with a lot of different work management software, um, but today we're going to be focused on Smartsheet. So to kick it off, introduce myself. My name is Kelly Pratt. I am a solution consultant with Echo. I've been here for about three years now. I am a Smartsheet Professional Services certified and a self-proclaimed Smartsheet nerd. I've worked with dozens of clients to implement Smartsheet as their primary work management software. So I look forward to jumping into this content with you all today. All right, so the basics. Smartsheet is comprised of <clears throat> three primary components. Sheets, reports, and dashboards. Um, these are really called assets within Smartsheet. So we'll start with Sheets. Sheets is really the foundation of all the work that you do in Smartsheet. <clears throat> it's really the source data. It's where your data lives. Um, it's very, in terms of um, a sh you know what the sheet looks like and how it functions, it's similar to Excel, but has much more robust capabilities. Um, but we do see a lot of clients that go from managing projects or managing other processes within Excel um, really transition nicely into Smartsheet just because of that kind of spreadsheet look and feel and functionality. Uh, the next piece is reports. So reports allows you to take that source data at the sheet level and really manipulate it to um, see it in the view that you'd like. And when I say that, that means you can customize, you know, what specific pieces of data you want to see, whether it's filter criteria, whether it's certain columns that you want to use. Um, and then it also allows you to do some summarization of that data as well. Um, reports are bi-directional, so the data goes both ways, and we'll get into that a little bit more. And then the, um, the final component is dashboard. So dashboards really provide that visual representation of your data. Um, it allows you to provide kind of like a landing page and a place to like summarize and see real-time data um, of what's going on across, whether it's your projects or other kind of task lists or work lists that you might be using Smartsheet to manage. I have some lingo here, um, words that I'm probably going to be using throughout the training. I'll try to define them as, they, as I go. I'm not going to run through and go through definitions. Um, currently, but over here, these are more kind of industry um, terms in the project management space. These are more specific to Smartsheet. Again, just went through those kind of asset components and some other areas that we'll review today. Um, so to start us off, this is what the Smartsheet navigation looks like. Obviously, you'll see you'll see it on a full screen, but this is kind of this left-hand sidebar that I'll show you when we get into the live demo. <clears throat> and has all these different um, pages that you can view your data. There's a home page that really just shows you um, sheets or reports or dashboards that you are frequently visiting or that you visited recently, kind of just gives you a jumping off point. The next part down, this is a notifications panel. Um, so Smartsheet allows for notifications. Um, they do send through email, but you also have a notifications panel within Smartsheet itself to see any notifications that um, you are being sent. Um, this next section, it's called Browse. It's really the primary navigation within Smartsheet, and that's where you'll find um, the, you know, again, I'll get into it in a few minutes, but like the workspace and folder structure um, and that navigation where you would find all of your Smartsheet assets. There's a page for recently viewed, so anything you've recently visited, and then there's also a favorites page, um, so you can favorite specific assets within Smartsheet, um, work apps, which is an add-on tool within Smartsheet, and then Solution Center, which I will I will show you when we get into demo. So every sheet um, has multiple views. So <clears throat> I mentioned before that it is similar in look and feel to Excel in some ways um, in terms of the grid view. So that's the primary view and the view that you'll see when you first open up a sheet. Um, but within that sheet, it also allows you to look at a Gantt view. So it kind of shows you your Gantt chart with your sheet data side by side. Um, there's also a card or you call it a Kanban view, which allows you to see it like grouped by specific potentially statuses or other pieces of information. Um, and then there's also a calendar view. Um, I would say this is the least utilized view in Smartsheet, but it does provide you a visual view within a monthly calendar if you're interested. Smartsheet is working on rolling out some more um, modern kind of timeline views, I think, to support the Gantt and calendar view, but this is what's available as of today. Um, within a sheet, there is hierarchy 
And really what the hierarchy represents is the relationship that tasks have to each other. So within a, um, just using project as an example, um, you're able to nest tasks underneath other pieces of information. Um, so you can see here, this example is there's a project name, and then there's the phase of planning, and then the tasks that are within the planning phase are kind of nested underneath. Um, what that allows, allows Smartsheet to do is roll up the data so that you can see, okay, for the planning phase with all the activities that I need to accomplish, it rolls up the start and end date, for example. It also calculates a percentage complete um, based on the data below. Um, it does allow you to nest pretty far down. I don't know, uh, maybe one of my teammates might know if there's a maximum on the um, number of levels you can indent. I think it's up to seven. Um, I could be challenged on that though, but it is quite a bit, so you can go pretty deep with it. Um, within a sheet, there's also, of course, columns, right? So every sheet has what's called a primary column. Um, the primary column is mandatory and cannot be deleted from the sheet, mm -hmm. and it can only be um, what's referred to as a text number column. So I can talk through the different column types as well. And that's the column where you can create that hierarchy. Um, so it's most commonly used for the main descriptor. Again, if we're just going along with um, the project example, um, that's where you're going to put like your task name, your project name, your phase names, your task names. Um, really, even without a project example, if you have a task list or even um, like a marketing requests sheet or something along those lines, the primary column is going to be the descriptor column of what is that specific activity that you need to perform. Um, this is just some screenshots of the column configuration. You can see a list of all the different types of columns. And then I like put out a few different screenshots again. We'll look at it live, but um, of the different types. So there's symbols, there's drop down lists, there's check boxes, there's um, automated columns that will show you when a row was created, when a row was modified, and by who, for example. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility within those. And then the text number column, I think it's pretty straightforward. It's where you can put text and numbers and that's where you would put any formulas and things like that as well. Um, so Smartsheet has um, the functionality of forms that connect to sheets. So what a form does as it relates to a sheet is it adds a new row of data to your sheet. Um, so it's a way that you can easily collect data, whether it's from your team or it's from a client to get you know, the data that you need within a sheet. Again, a good example of this might be a, um, a marketing request. Maybe your client um, can submit marketing requests to your team if you're a marketing team, and it will have, you know, what's the description, what's the due date, things like that, and that will automatically add a row and then map the data to the appropriate columns. Forms allow for conditional logic, so you can say, you know, only show this field if, if this field says X. So I'll walk you through that in the demo, um, but allows you to really customize those forms um, to get the end user the experience that you're hoping that they get. Um, <clears throat> sheets also have automations. Um, they call them automations and workflows, and um, they're really uh, broken down into three components. So triggers, conditions, and actions. So a trigger is what is the thing that's going to kick off this workflow? What's going to make it run? Is it a piece of data changes to a specified input? Is it a um, specified date and time or recurring date and time? <clears throat> and then whatever that trigger is, what is the condition of it? What does what data does the row need to meet or what criteria does that row need to meet to qualify for the next step, which is the action block? And the action allows you to do things like send notifications, request additional information, record dates, change cell values, things like that. Um, condition path is just, you can have multiple condition paths in one workflow. Um, so it allows you to execute multiple actions based on one specific trigger with data that meets specific different criteria. Um, formulas, so formulas in Smartsheet operate pretty similarly to Excel. In most cases, functions and formulas are written the same um, or very closely. Um, and they can be used in multiple column types. I think I mentioned before, the most common is text and number, but you actually can use formulas in all of these different types of column types as well, which is really helpful. So if you are familiar with Excel, um, that's great. If you're familiar with formulas in Excel, you can probably use them right within Smartsheet, um, which is great transfer of knowledge. Um, there is also a really new feature that is coming out, which is gonna allow um, 
it's like a, an AI feature within Smartsheet, which is going to generate formulas for you. So you're going to be able to like put in a <clears throat> description of what you're hoping for it to do, and then it will generate the formula for you, which can be really useful. <clears throat> Go ahead. I have one quick question. Uh, first of all, nice to, to meet you all. Uh, you with this newest feature that's going to be released soon, is it going to be available for everybody that has this market license or just specific plans? That's a really good question. I don't know the answer off the top of my head, but we can definitely look into that and follow up with you directly on it. Um, if anyone on my team has insight, feel free to jump in and chat. Um, Kelly, it's a good question. Like I believe it's going to be available to everybody. I'll see if I can find a little bit on that while we're in the webinar. And if I don't find the answer by the end of this, um, we can definitely follow up directly for sure. Great question. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I am in the um, like early adopter program, um, which is pretty easy to sign up for. I don't know if there's restrictions on who can who can um, sign up for that, but that's how I have access to it now. Um, and it, it does work pretty well. <laughs> what was that? I don't see that on my end, so I was wondering if maybe I'm on a different plan. Yeah, no, I think it's just because I'm in the early adopter program. So that's why I think it is going to be available for everyone. But in the early adopter, they release kind of the new features from a beta perspective um, out to any of those who sign up. So feel free to do a quick Google search on early adopter program Smartsheet. I'm pretty sure anyone can apply. Um, so check it out and you can you can submit your email and see if they'll grant you access for that. Thank you. Um, OK, report. So. We talked about this at um, the beginning, one of the primary kind of assets within Smartsheet. So reports really allow you to compile information across multiple sheets. Um, we also use reports for just one sheet as well. And it allows you to customize to only see the data that you want to see. So let's say your sheet has 10 columns but for this particular report. You really only need to see four of them. The report allows you to just select those four columns. Um, it also allows you to filter the data based on specific criteria. Um, so if you only want to see tasks that are due in the next seven days, for example, you can do that. Um, you can also summarize data. So let's say um, we use, uh, we call it a CRADE log. It might be more commonly known as a RAID log. Let's say you have a RAID log um, and you have open risks, actions, issues, and decisions. A report will allow you to kind of group the data by those different categories and then summarize it so you can see how many are in, um, in the sheet. So I can show you what that looks like in the demo as well. Um, I mentioned before reports are bi-directional with sheets. Um, I almost think of a report as a sheet that's just filtered. As soon as you update data in a report, it's going to be updated at the sheet and vice versa. Um, so they're really almost the same thing. They're, they're um, interconnected. Um, there are two different types of reports. The most um, common um, report is called a row report. So that's aggregating row data across multiple sheets. Um, the sheet summary report is only going to display summary data. So I'll get into this when we get into the demo as well. But at a sheet level, you can add what's called summary data um, that you can like summarize information within your sheet or just have specific project metadata. And you can also look at reports across sheet summaries as well. Um, something I wanted to call out is the differences between reports and sheet filters. So on a um, sheet itself, you can actually apply filters. Um, and then a report, of course, does the same thing, but then has more capabilities such as, you know, selecting the columns and grouping and summarizing. There are also differences between the capabilities of filters at a sheet level and a report level. Um, <clears throat> so, for example, in a sheet, um, you can filter criteria either by all your conditions or only or meeting at least one condition. Whereas in a report, you can do any combination of like and or conditions. Um, so it really gives you more flexibility to show different sets of data in a report. Um, in a sheet filter, you can include parent rows and it still shows you the hierarchy. Um, in a report, there is no hierarchy. It's not going to show tasks where they're nested. Um, and it's going to include any rows that meet specified criteria. It's not going to include parent rows if it doesn't meet that criteria. So it's another kind of key differentiator between those. Sheet filters allow you to have, you have shared filters where everybody who has access to the sheet can filter them, and then you can have your own personal ones. Um, reports are only customizable by license and admin users. So dashboards, um, dashboards are a visualiz visualization tool. So it's really made up of... Um, a bunch of different widget options that Smartsheet provides. So it allows you to look and visualize data in different ways. So 
There are capabilities to add charts, for example. You can add reports, which is a table view, but right, that like filtering with those filtering options that we've been talking about. You can add images. You can add frame-ins from other websites. Um, you can also add forms. So it's really like a great place where you can have one specific landing page to get all of your real-time data in one place, as well as a navigation tool to get to other sheets and assets within Smartsheet. Um, so for example, for a project, we would have a project um, dashboard that has links to all of the different assets that a project would need to be managed, such as a project schedule and a raid log um, and different reports that we might build based on that. Um, the last thing I wanted to touch on before we jump into a demo is permissions. Um, <clears throat> so there's two different categories when we think about permissions. There's user types and then there's sharing permissions. So um, user types are either licensed or non-licensed users. Um, the primary difference between a licensed and a non-licensed user is a non-licensed user can collaborate on data that's in Smartsheet, but it can't create anything new. So a you really need to have a license in order to create a sheet, create a report, <clears throat> create a workspace, update columns, things like that. Then there's sharing permissions, which is separate. So if you are a licensed user, you can still only have editor permissions or viewer permissions to something which would not allow you to do the things an admin can do. So an admin can update columns, move columns, um, lock columns, um, and I'll, I'll show you this live as well, um, but it gives more flexibility on the different types of changes that you can make. So two different things um, when you're thinking about what your permissions are and what your team might need um, for a user type versus sharing permissions.